Let's learn how to knit cables, but without a cable needle. Is that even possible? I'm gonna show you how to do it. You could knit entire shawls like this Cables Please shawl, or any of these sweaters or hats. You can knit all those cables without a cable needle. So let's learn how to do it. Let's work some cables. I'm going to do a cable four back. Working with four stitches, these first two will be placed on a cable needle and travel to the back. But instead of doing that, we don't need a cable needle. I'm going to insert my right needle into the next two stitches, slide the needle off, and stick it back through, and then place those knit stitches on the left needle, and you can knit or purl as instructed in the pattern. This was a cable for back. So those two stitches traveled along the back, and you knit or purl them. Okay, let's do a cable for front. So these two stitches are going to travel on the front, across the front of these two. So again, I'm gonna take my needle and stick it through those two stitches and then rescue the first two. Look at this, they're traveling in front. Place those two stitches onto the left needle and again, knit or purl as instructed in the pattern. I'm going to purl those two, and this would be knitting the two from the cable needle. But we don't need that. So that was pretty good. All stitches are safe and sound. Let's try that again. Let's do a cable for back. So I want these two stitches to travel behind those two stitches. So I'm gonna put my needle right through those two so that my first two stitches can be rescued in the back, just like that. And look at that, they traveled to the back. Now we need to put these stitches on the left needle so we can knit and follow the knits and purls as instructed in the pattern. That is all there is to it. You just slip the stitches off and make sure they cross either in the front or they cross along the back as instructed in your cable instructions, but that's what you do. Let's do that a couple more times. Cable for back. These two stitches need to go to the back. So I'm gonna slip the next two onto my needle so that those can be placed along the back. Pop them onto the right needle. Knit. I'm going to purl the next two. Cable for front. These two stitches are going to cross in front of those two. Stick the right needle into the other, the last two and then rescue the front stitches. And I'm going to purl those, and I'm gonna knit these two. I'm starting to make these really nice honeycomb cables. So you can knit these beautiful cable patterns without a cable needle. These are called cable for front and cable for back. They work with two stitches crossing on top of two stitches. Let's do a cable for back one more time. Insert the right needle into the last two stitches. Rescue the first two. And pop them onto the left needle. You can do this cable without a cable needle for lots of different cables. Sometimes cables cross one stitch over just one stitch, or one stitch over three. This Moose River Cowl is knit with two by two cables, two crossing over two. You might have cables that cross three over three, or four over four, and you can also do these fat cables without a cable needle. Let's see how to do that. Let's do a big cable. I'm going to do a cable eight back. Working with eight stitches, the pattern will say, put the first four stitches on a cable needle 
and hold them to the back. Instead of that, I'm going to take these last four stitches onto my right needle. And as soon as I slide those back stitches off, I put them back on the left needle. Now we can put those four stitches on the left needle. This is a bit daring because there's more stitches to slip around. Continue to knit or purl as instructed. I'm going to knit and I'm going to purl these last four. So it gets a little trickier when you're slipping more stitches, but it does work when you slip them onto the needle and rescue them right away. And it's wool. Look at this. I'm going to take some stitches off. That's scary, but nothing's happening. Nothing's going to happen to those stitches unless you pull and tug. So when you slip them off and put them back on the needle, they're going to stay put. Just don't pull on anything too much. So I find that it's helpful that whenever I slide stitches off the needle, I'm grabbing, I'm pinching the fabric. And that helps it become a little more secure when I'm traveling stitches. So that's what you do to cable without a cable needle. Again, if it feels scary or a little bit dangerous, it is okay to use a cable needle. So let me show you a cable using my trusty little cable needle. I'm lucky that I was able to find this. I think I sat on it and it bent. Thank goodness I just didn't sit on that end of the cable needle. <sighs> Disaster, crisis averted. Okay, let's do a cable for back with a cable needle. I'm gonna place these stitches on my cable needle, knit those two, and now you can knit or purl, whatever the pattern says. Knit or purl the stitches from the cable needle. That didn't take too much longer. If you wanna use a cable needle, it's totally fine. It's not that much quicker or slower to use a cable needle or not use one but I usually just can't find my cable needle, so I use this method of cabling without a cable needle. Let's do one more. Let's do a cable four front. Working with four stitches, slip the last two on the right needle, rescue the front stitches, and pop them back on the needle. Knit or purl as instructed really fun. So you can work all kinds of cables with that method. This is the Moose River Cowl knit with three skeins of Westwool Tandem and you can knit all the cables without a cable needle. These beautiful honeycombs and these ribbed cables that are really fat and chunky. These are also reversible. So they look really nice on the inside and the outside of this cowl. The cabled Columns hat is a really easy first cabling project. They have really subtle cables and these are cables with slip stitches. So I knit all of these skinny cables without a cable needle. A really fun hat to knit in DK weight yarn. Another DK weight project is this big shawl. This is the Cables Please shawl and it has fat 4x4 four four cables in the center of the shawl and two by two honeycomb cables. All of these cables were knit without a cable needle. But again, if, that, if you do find comfort in the cable needle, the safety of that needle, you can totally use a cable needle. There's no really right or wrong way to do cabling as long as it looks like a cable. <laughs> you wanna make sure that it travels in front and in back appropriately, depending on the pattern. But I just love this DK weight Cables Please shawl. It's really fun with lots of stripes and accent colors that you can customize with your stash. And there's even a brioche border. So if you want to learn how to do this, I'll link my brioche tutorial in the description box below. It's really fun to do that graphic reversible brioche. And look at that. It looks reversible. It's the same on the front and the back. Such a statement shawl. Isn't cable knitting so much fun? And now you don't have to worry about losing those pesky little cable needles. But it is okay if you need to use them, all right? There's no rules in knitting. We're gonna set our own rules and then break them 
And whatever you do, there's always another way to do it. So just have fun with your knitting. And if you wanna try any of the patterns I showed in this video, I linked those down below so you can download the patterns and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see some more techniques. I'm sharing a lot more I-cord, cast on, all kinds of knitting techniques and tips. So keep a lookout for all those new videos coming at you soon. See you in the next video.